Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is me, Sir Kelvin, and for this video, I'm gonna share to you the things to remember to avoid being offloaded. So before I start, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, click the bell button for notification, and if you have comments and suggestions, you may write down in the comment section below. Before I start this video, I just like to acknowledge Ma'am Ligaya Solera for this uh, article about 7 things to remember to avoid being offloaded that is published last July 15, 2015. And I guess this is so general. In my case, I also visioning these things for me to pass the Philippine immigration. Isa sa mga hindi gustong mangyari ng isang traveler, especially ng mga Pinoy na gustong bumiyahe palabas ng bansa, ay ma-offload. Ma-offload sa Philippine Immigration. So, ito yung mga bagay na kailangan yung malaman para may wasang ma-offload during the interview sa Philippine Immigration. In order to pass the immigration, you need to, to remember all of these things. So, let's start. So, number one. Prepare your requirements. So according to the website of Bureau of Immigration, so at a minimum, a traveler intending to, to go abroad shall be required to present a passport valid for at least 6 months. So ibig sabihin, yung passport mo should expire 6 months after your trip. So yun ang pinaka minimum na patakaran ng Bureau of Immigration with regards to the uh, validity of the passport. Aside from the passport, the validity of the passport, you need to prepare visa if your country of destination requires you to have a visa. But if you are planning to ASEAN countries, you are not going to prepare your visa. Then, after that, the most important thing is you have to prepare your round trip tickets. So these are basically the important requirement you will be needing in order to pass the Philippine immigration. Again, for the requirements, you need to prepare the Philippine passport, the visa, if any, and the round trip ticket. However, the Bureau of Immigration further states that they will also be assessing the traveler's age, educational attainment, and financial capability to travel. So, mas maigi if you prepare all of this, yung nabanggit ko, in order to defend Philippine immigration and eventually pass the Philippine immigration. Well, let's go to number two. You don't need to travel rich, you just need to be able to afford your trip. So again, you don't need to travel rich. You just need to be able to afford your trip. Ibig sabihin, hindi kailangang mayaman ka. Ang importante, you can afford or nagagastusan mo yung biyahe mo. So what's the meaning of this? Hindi kailangang milyon yung pera mo sa bangko. Ang importante ay you are capable to travel abroad. So of course, just a logic, you cannot travel abroad if you don't have money. Hindi lang mayaman yung nakakapagbiyahe, but all of us have the right to travel abroad. As long as you have the financial capability to travel. So again, you don't need to be rich. You just need to be able to afford your trip. That is number two. So number three, double check if you are required to present other documents. What is the meaning of this? Aside from the documents I presented in number one, you need to have this if you were included in some cases. Say for example, if you are not financially capable, so therefore, you need to have authenticated affidavit of support or letter of invitation. If you have relatives abroad and they invite you to go to, to that particular country, so therefore you need to secure a letter of invitation coming from your relative. Since you, you are not financially capable and they are just inviting you to come over to their place in other countries. Number two, minors traveling alone or with a person other than a parent will need to travel a travel clearance from the DSWD or the Department of Social Welfare and Development. Kapag may kasama kayong bata na hindi nyo anak, 
So that kid should secure a clearance, travel clearance coming from the DSWD. So third, if you are an overseas Filipino workers or OFW, you need to show your working permit and OEC from the PUEA. That's basically the requirement for the OFW. And fourth, partners and spouses of foreign nationals who intended to meet, marry their partner, spouse, abroad will need to present a guidance and counseling certificate or GCC from the Commission on Filipino Overseas. So those are other documents that you need to present in some cases. So again, let's review. So number one, if you are not financially capable, you need to present affidavit of support or letter of invitation. Number two, kapag mayroon kayong kasamang minor na hindi nyo anak, so that minor should secure a travel permit from the DSWD or travel clearance. Number three, if you are an overseas Filipino workers or OFW, you need to present the working contract or OEC from the PUEA. And number four, if you are the partner or spouse of a foreign national, so you need to secure or present a guidance and counseling certificate or GCC coming from the Commission on Filipino Overseas. So let's have number four. So number four is the return date or reason for going. This is very important. Before you can leave the country, you need to sign a Philippine Immigration Departure Card. So sa departure card na yun, you need to declare the date you are going to leave the Philippines and the date that you will going back to the Philippines. As well as the reason why you need to, to go out. Usually, it is just a range of date then the reason is for example you want to travel or have some vacation to that particular country so you need to declare the purpose of your travel including the date and that will serve as the basis of the immigration officer when you declare something in the departure card you need to be faithful to that declaration if you said that you need to go back to the philippines on this particular date you need to go back to that particular date. So that's how particular the Bureau of Immigration on the dates you've declared in the Philippine departure card. So that's number four. Meron mga instances that a particular traveler has already the round trip ticket, but they are not using the return ticket because in some cases they will find a job in other countries. So in order to assess further that particular passenger or traveler, so the Bureau of Immigration will tend to question you about the ties you have in the Philippines, like your relatives, your kids, your your husband or your, your wife. So for the kids, they will require you a proof that will be telling that you have a kids in the Philippines. And for the husband or wife, so they will be requiring to, to provide a proof that you have husband and wife in the Philippines so that they will be convinced that you will be coming back on the date that you've declared. So aside from those, you need to prepare itinerary and you need to master that itinerary. You need to know the places you're going. You need to know the places you want to visit on that particular country. You need to know where is the accommodation, what is the address of, of your accommodation. And of course, bakit kailangan ganito yung immigration officer? Some others saying that they are so strict, but their main role is to prevent us from other circumstances like human trafficking, bad circumstances like human trafficking or drug trafficking. In some other sense, they are just protecting us. They are just protecting their fellow Filipinos. So that's the main purpose of the Bureau of Immigration. So number five, this is very important, never lie to immigration officer. If the immigration officer asks you something, answer them in a truthful way. So honesty is the best policy. If the immigration officer asks you about your job and you said you are an engineer, then the immigration officer requires you to present an, a PRC ID and you don't have that PRC ID. So from that point, they will be doubtful already. So they will be assessing you in some aspect. So if you've been asked by an immigration officer, you need to answer them in a truthful manner so that they will be convinced that you are really want to do 
this and that in that particular country and you just come back after. Of course, in, a, in an immigration officer, they don't have the lie detector test. The only way to assess the passenger is based on their experience and instincts. Now, if you've been interrogated by an immigration officer, you need to answer them in a truthful manner. So, one question, one answer, one direct answer. Okay, number six. It is better to over-prepare than to under-prepare. So, naranasan ko na tong number six. So, I prepared all the documents, the round trip tickets, and so on. Then, when I had already my turn to the immigration officer, I handed all the documents to him. And, tumingin siya sa akin at sinabing, Why is it that you're giving me all these documents? I just need the passport and the return ticket. So, of course, you will be shocked, but I don't think that's any no problem to me because I just prepared all these documents. At least if the immigration officer will question me something or, or will require me to present something, I have all of those documents. Kesa naman na kulang yung documents mo and the immigration officer will ask you something na wala ka. So, ano na lang yun? So, that will be the ground for offloading. Then for the last thing to remember, the number seven, dress decently, speak confidently. So that's the important thing. Hindi ibig sabihin na you overdress, but hindi naman ibig sabihin na you have to be underdressed. Ang ibig sabihin lang nito is you need to be confident on what you are wearing. So dapat yung sinusuot mo ay talagang you are going to the, to that particular country to to travel, some relaxation, to have some vacation. And hindi ka naman magbabakasyon if you will be wearing an Americana or a formal attire. So, the attire should be like a traveler. And aside from that, you speak confidently. So, it is okay to be nervous. Pero, hindi naman kailangan kinakabahan if you are not hiding something. Diba? If you are not hiding something, Therefore, you will be confident on what the immigration officer will going to ask you. But take note, overconfident will lead you into something that is not good. So therefore, if the immigration officer will ask you something that requires one answer, therefore you answer it directly. Hindi pwedeng, if the immigration officer will ask you something that requires one answer, then marami kang sinasabi. Yun, again, do not lie on immigration officer and your answer should be in truthful manner. So that's it. So those are the seven things to remember to avoid being offloaded. So of course it is okay to be nervous facing the Philippine immigration but this Bureau of Immigration Officer are just doing their part in preventing us to be involved in human trafficking and drug trafficking. So I hope all of this will help you as you go on to the process of being interrogated by an immigration officer. If you, if you remember all of these seven things, so you will be able to pass the Philippine immigration. Again, thank you for watching. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Click the bell button for notification. And if you have comments, suggestions, and clarifications, you may write down in the comment section below.